What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I'm bringing you guys another installment of my 20 favorite horror movies of all time. In honor of Halloween, I have been counting backwards from 20 to 1 with one or two a day um, of my 20 favorite horror films, with number one being unveiled on Halloween morning in honor of October, my favorite month and mostly all of yours. And uh, I've done now number 20 through number 9, so all those videos are available on my channel as well. Go check those out. Every movie is about a 5 to 8 minute little review of the movie. I just talk about things I like about it and just sort of give a, a brief background on why it's one of my personal favorite all-time horror films. Today I've got number 8 in the series. We are getting down to the nitty gritty. It is uh, Halloween week. I'm very excited. And number eight here is another 1980s classic and is also uh, another Stephen King movie uh, adaptation. As you've seen several already on this list, it's become a running theme now with Stephen King. But this one is possibly my, my personal all-time favorite of Stephen King's. It is 1989's Pet Cemetery. I've got a few notes here. I love Pet Cemetery. Um, I've owned this DVD for a long, long time. This is one of those movies that when it comes on TV... Even if I've seen it two days ago or I've seen it a thousand times, I've got to watch it in full every time it comes on. I uh, just, just can't put it away. Just The acting is so iconic. And it's one of those movies that has a crazy premise, but it doesn't take itself too lightly. Um, I like movies that even if the premise is a little crazy and it seems a little far-fetched, that it doesn't treat itself like a B-movie. It sort of uh, takes everything with a grain of salt, but also progresses the story in a serious manner. And uh, this is, it's a crazy story, but it, but it's acted well, and it's told in a serious way, and it's really creepy. There's a lot of really weird things in this movie that stick with you. Um, again, there are spoilers in this, so if you have not seen it, pause the video, go watch the movie, and come back, because there are spoilers. But uh, this was directed in 1989 by Mary Lambert. It was adapted from Stephen King, obviously, uh, from his book. And uh, originally, George Romero was supposed to have the rights to this and do this, but he had to back out due to involvement in another movie that he was working on at the time. So George Romero was going to do this and wound up not doing it. Uh, but Mary Lambert did a nice job. She's known from a couple other B-horror films, Halloween Town 2. Uh, she also did Pet Cemetery 2, the sequel to this, which was not very good. Um, a couple other things. I think she did uh, one of the um, Bloody Mary movies as well. Um, so again, uh, she's known as kind of a, of a B-horror movie director. Does a wonderful job here. <laughs> this movie stars Miko Hughes as Gage Creed. And uh, I love, love to credit Fred Gwynn here, is, is uh, Judd, uh, Judd Crandall, Crandall, sorry, reading my own writing is, is a horror story in itself. But uh, again, this, this movie basically is um, a father, his wife, and their two young children, a daughter and a son, and their pet cat. Uh, Midnight is the name? Midnight? I'm trying to think of the cat's name. I'm forgetting it, and I, I, I'm an idiot because this is a, it's a classic cat's name. I want to say Midnight. Anyway, uh, the cat gets gets run over and gets killed, and um, the daughter is coming home from visiting the grandmother the next day, so he feels bad about the cat getting killed and knows how close the daughter is to the cat. So he talks to his neighbor, Judd Crandall, played by Fred Gwynn, played excellently, who was also, I think, Herman Munster, or Eddie Munster, one of the Munsters. I think it was Herman. And uh, he talks to the neighbor, and the neighbor says there's a burial ground, an ancient burial ground, that makes dead things come back to life. If you bury them overnight, they come back a few days later, or the next day or whatever, and um, they, they are renewed. He tries to tell the father also that when they come back, they are tainted. They are not good because the burial ground is tainted. But the father, nonetheless, hears the burial ground, doesn't care about the, the haunted story, takes the cat to get buried and come back to life. The cat comes back the next day, of course, but he's evil. He's hissing and biting and causing trouble. Uh, and he's just, he's just totally ruined. So the burial ground is tainted and everything that gets buried there does come back to life, but comes back different and evil. It's not the same. It's a haunted spirit that tries to kill when it comes back. So awesome premise. Um, of course, a few days later, Gage Creed, Mika Hughes' character, gets killed. The father is grief-stricken. And despite the fact that the cat has turned evil, he takes the son back anyway to be buried a lot, to be buried to come back to life the next day. So he doesn't learn from his mistake. And of course, Gage comes back, evil as all hell, and wants to kill people. Um, creepy, just creepy scenes here. Just uh, Gage on the phone saying, hey daddy, I want to play with you next. I played with mommy. Uh, the mom gets killed by Gage. 
Um, even though they know this, this stuff's going to be evil, they're still grief-stricken and want to see their, their child come back to life. So, of course, the, the kid starts killing. He's creepy. He's, he's evil. The cat's scary. Uh, there's a B storyline going on with the mother and the grandmother who, who is sickly. And uh, the mom, as a kid, had to watch her mother grow ill. And the mom uh, has a little scene where she, uh, in kind of a haunting form, comes back and starts to um, threaten the mother. Really creepy scene there that stays with you. Uh, the quotes from Fred Gwynn, sometimes dead is better. Yeah, just great stuff. Awesome, iconic stuff. Good quotes, good direction, good acting all around, especially Miko and Fred Gwynn. And also uh, the, the, husband, the father, the main character in this movie. I don't, didn't write his name down, but he does an awesome job here as well. Eventually kills Gage the cat uh, once and for... Uh, I'm sorry, night, night, uh, whatever the heck the cat's name is. He kills the cat once and for all. Um, and and yeah, eventually kills Gage as well. Um, and just the lines he says to killing the cat. Um, eat, eat, lay, play dead, be dead. More iconic quotes that stay with me forever. I can quote this movie from start to finish the entire time. But he kills the cat. He re-kills Gage again with a, a knife to the neck which is a really, a really iconic scene with Gage falling over into innocence as well. Um, eventually, again, the main character is an idiot. He does not learn that uh, when you bury things there, they come back evil. Um, Fred Gwynn gets killed before Gage dies by getting sliced in the, in the uh, heel and chopped across the neck. Another iconic, gory scene. Then at the end, um, the wife being killed, the, the, the husband, the main character, goes back to take the wife to the ancient burial ground once again because he can't live without her. So even though he's already seen the cat come back evil and had to kill it again, and seen Gage come back evil and had to kill it again, he still puts the wife in the burial ground. She comes back. He's happy at the end of the movie. He goes to give her a hug. They embrace. And of course she's evil. She takes a knife behind his back and stabs him, presumably killing him. And not gonna lie, he kind of deserves it after making the third mistake in the same kind in this movie. But again, um, some good gore in this. Kids are always creepy. Animals are always creepy. The cat and the kid do a wonderful job. The acting is good. The quotes are great. The direction is good. And Stephen King's uh, adaptation of this novel uh, has done total justice here. So, what do you guys think of this movie? Number 8 on my list, Pet Cemetery, 1989. Is it too high or too low? Is it on your list? What are your lists? If you've, if you've seen this movie, what do you think of it? Tell me all this stuff in the comments down below. And I'll come back to you guys tomorrow with my number 7 pick as we're getting near the end of my all-time favorite horror movies. So until then, guys, stay scared, dim the lights, lock the doors, and enjoy the movies. Happy Halloween.